Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video, and they have finally given us the start date for the upcoming Christmas event. So that's going to be what today's video is going to be about as I go over and talk about it. So, let's get right into it. So first things first, it is going to be starting on December 7th, likely after maintenance. That will mean it actually starts on the 8th, which is the way it goes, depending on your time zone, it might change. And it's only going to be here for a week, and then it's gone. The obvious reason why is because uh, we have Tungska coming up, or however you pronounce it. And that is going to be a raid event, and that's going to require you to be... That's the event that requires you to uh, be caught up onto Lost Belt 6. This is not what is going to be required Lost Belt 6. I think this is just Fuyuki, if I remember right. Yep. Uh, so as such, we have a lot of event and a lot of grind that only lasts a single week. <laughs> I think I checked on the JP side of the game, and it lasted about that long. Um, it lasted a week and like a couple days more, so it was we were obviously getting it for much less time, and uh, that probably means that the event itself is going to be pretty easy to do. Most Lotto actual like story events are not very hard, uh, but only having a week to do Lotto grinding is a little bit. S <laughs> it kind of sucks. Usually, Lotto grind is the absolute best time to kind of get material for certain stuff. So that kind of sucks. But anyway, let's go into the actual event. That's enough. I just need to preface that and say all that. Obviously, if you want to do this one, you're going to have to clear Fuyuki, um, which is the first thing you ever fight. And this is all about where we're going to get Santa Martha. So in terms of the event itself, this is very easy. It is literally just a lotto event. What's a lotto event? Well, lotto events are a thing where you get access to the lottery. And basically, there's inside of the lottery, there's a box with a grand prize inside of it with the first four boxes the grand prize being the the ladle which is the essential material that you need for the the unit the fifth one is going to be a saintess apprentice exchange ticket which i think is what you use for uh actually i don't know what you use this for now that i look at it it is <laughs> I, I, exchange ticket what are you exchanging for it i actually don't know because again i don't look into the actual events until we there we go spin the roulette with the tree spoon and collect the holy maiden appreciation exchange ticket and that will be what makes santa martha permanent okay there you go um on the six it's going to be a crystallized lore and then seven and ten the grand prize is going to be golden foes for hp i believe i always forget which one is which it is attack foes okay it's attack foes and then on the 11th, there's no grand prize, and therefore uh, you have to go through all of it. So the way that it's currently set up is that through boxes 1 through 10, the second you get the grand prize, you can automatically reset the box. And that way you can get to the grand prizes way faster. Uh, this is I best probably the best way to do it if you're someone who only really cares about doing the bare minimum in lotto grinding, which is just getting the ladle, getting basically all the big hit ticket items, and then leaving. Um, what I'll say is is that you probably should not do that until you've gone in at least all the materials that are exclusive to those boxes. So there are differences. So here are the big ones. The main big one is is that there are, is golden apples and silver apples in the first 10 boxes, but they are not in the 11th boxes. Once you hit the 11th boxes and, uh, and forward, there's only going to be bronze apples. So it's kind of good to actually pick up those apples because it'd be good to have them. I forget what they replaced them for in here. Oh yeah, I, I don't know what they replaced them for in here, honestly. It might just be some QP and some friend points based on what the quick look at that I'm having right here. But in terms of other things that you'll get inside the lotto, which are shared between all of them, you'll get four Merry Ciders, two Christmas exchange tickets, um, uh, the Twin Crystals, the Magatamas, the Kota Magatamas, the Stinger of Certain Death, stakes and then gems for all of the seven classes 25 qp 15 uh not 25 qp exp 25 4 exp 15 uh 4 exp and then the apples that i mentioned beforehand 45 mana prisms friend points and qp and that's about what you'll get inside a single box from the first 10 and the once you get to the 11th the thing that changes is that um you just get some friend points and some qp over the apples so um and the Christmas exchange ticket, which you can get right here, as you can see right here, <coughs> can be exchanged for the following items, which is Talon of Chaos, the Aurora Steel, and the Phoenix Plum. 
uh, in the event shop itself, you can see what you can get with the cider, which is for the four copies of Martha. You can get a crystallized lore, a uh, quick code, op the openers for quick arts and buster, along with a code remover, and then just 500 500k QP per um, cider that you get. There's 38 total according to this. I guess 38 to get them all, or just 38? And I don't know, actually, because there's unlimited amount of those, so there you go. You need 38 to get the full thing in the shop, and then after that, it's just 500k QP. Uh, there's also still drops, regular drops. You'll get rich butter, sweet egg, and candied fruits. Inside of here is where you'll find the basic stuff, like the Like a Lady. This is the Vargas CE with uh, Gawain, where they're in there and they're making some delicious food right here. Um, no potatoes being shown, though, so I don't know. Um, but in the butter, you can get in all uh, three of them, you can get the CE. You can also get the Servant Coins. You'll also get Golden Foe, I think, for all of them. This is where you'll get the HP version. Two for the Butter and then one for each of the other ones. In terms of materials, you've got the Heart of the Foreign God, the Primordial Langua, and the Giant Spring. Uh, for the Sweet Egg, you have the Dragon's Reverse Scale, the Ice Crystal, and the uh, Void Refuse, which is just dust. And then candied fruits, you have pages, you have the Idrisil seed and the hero's proof, and then also foes for silver foes. This is where the silver foes are, because it's the bronze material. And yeah, that's basically it. The lot It's very simple to lotto grind. Basically at the beginning, what most people do is that they will grind so that they have all the um, this specific seed, because like a lady will... Actually, does Like a Lady even give... Yeah, it gives a bonus to the material that is what you use to go for lotto grinding. So you obviously get all of these. You typically do not max unlimit break it until you get like a buttload of copies of it. It depends on kind of your setup and stuff like that. But this is typically what I do. Is that you get all four of them and then you look at what other stuff are in the shop and you prioritize the stuff that's in the shop that you would want. Like I don't give a crap about this language because I already have like 200 of them. I would probably get the Giant's Ring and the Heart of the Foreign God and the Foes and get these, try to get these, finish the shop, look at here, get what I want from here, get what I want from there, and then just 100% focus on Lotto Grinding and that is it. Um, lotto Grind is very, very easy and also very, very boring. <laughs> it's better if you have something to do while you're doing it. Uh, unless you have an auto clicker, which I don't use an auto clicker. <laughs> I experience at this point I treat it as an experience as I do it all myself and just experience the true wonders that is watching a good old TV show in the background while auto grinding while doing everything. Um, most people use a clicker and use an auto clicker or do something like that. I don't know how to do that. Good luck with that if you do it, but <laughs> don't come to me if you're looking for that. Um, and yeah, this is the most important part about Lotto. But the good thing is, is that if you hate Lotto grinding with a passion, the only thing you really need to do is get 10 of these. Get to the grand prizes. And if all you care about is the grand prizes and you don't give a crap about apples or anything like that, none of this entices you or you're someone who doesn't have a lot of apples and you're actually just waiting for the next event, which is going to be a raid event. This is going to be a very, very interesting time because the thing that follows up the Lotto event is a raid event and not everyone has crazy amounts of apples like i have a lot of apples but likely a lot of people don't um so if you're someone you're gonna have to probably look at the drop rates between them and see which one is best typically i think raids are typically seen as the best uh this is also something to keep in mind if you have not finished lost belt 6 i also think you should maybe focus on finishing lost belt 6 before you heavy focus on lotto grinding and maybe try and do the bare minimum for lotto grinding and then get into finishing the story in Lost Belt 6 because uh, the next event being limited in such a way, you got to make concessions somewhere. But anyway, that's the event itself. It's the Lotto Grind. It is the exact same way every single year. Uh, and now let's talk about the actual units. I think that's the longest time I've ever spent talking about the actual event inside the event. But Lotto Grind happens every year and Lotto Grind is super important if you're someone who is trying to build up their box. I know for me personally, I've used the Lotto because you see all these materials that they just drop here. Um, typically in the other Lotto Grand, they actually have the Ascension material. I use this as an excuse to just level up my entire box. I have a Max Ascension box and it's 100% because of the Lotto Grind. Um, I, the reason I have 300 and 200 of so many things is because I just Lotto Grind non-stop. The only thing that stops you from Lotto Grinding is your stamina. 
And as if you have plenty of apples, you can just keep on going and keep on going. And if you don't ever tire of it, or like I said, you're using some kind of auto clicker, um, you can get a lot of material for it S to the point where you might actually get so much material you don't know what to do with it. So I think it's very important if you're a new player and you're looking to build up your box, it's good to do the lotto. It's just unfortunate that it's being that it's kind of like you have to finish Lost Belt 6 in order to get to the next event. And that's a raid event and raid events are as important as lotto events, I feel. But anyway, that's enough of that. Let's talk about the actual unit. Units involved. We'll talk. We'll go over the free one because I think the free one first because it is a very interesting unit. Uh, but thankfully, there is no new units. It is only old units and the free-to-play unit, which is actually the new. I guess there's there is new units, but whatever. The new unit is an old unit. The new <laughs> the new unit is an old unit. The new unit is a free-to-play unit, so in theory, everyone can get them. Uh, Santa Martha, and the banner itself, I have to look up on the JP side, because who knows if the US side will ch decide to change it or not, but um, they shouldn't. They really shouldn't. There's no reason to. They would be really nice if they didn't change it. <laughs> It'd be kind of a pain in the ass if they changed the banner now that I think about it. But anyway, let's go over first for Santa Martha. She's a canister. She has two quicks, two arts, one buster. Her first skill is Martha's Home Cooking EX, increases one ally's attack for three turns, increases their max HP for three turns, and then charges their MP gauge by 20%. Uh, attack up is 30%, and the HP increase is 2,000, and the cooldown is 6. Her second skill is the Elder Sister's Meddling B, which seals all enemies' MP for one turn, and then reduces their defense for three turns. 20%, cooldown of 6. Her third skill is Santa Claus's Invitation C+, increases one ally's critical star absorption for one turn, gain 10 crit stars, and then charges own NP gauge. The absorption is 500%, and the MP up is 30%, and the cooldown is 6. Her passive skills are Territory Creation B, Item Construction D, and Writing EX. Her third append skill is an Anti-Ruler Attack Damage Aptitude. Uh, and her Noble Phantasm is the C+, Happy Merry Christmas, May Everyone Enjoy This Christmas Feast, C+, Rank, Cooking, Noble Phantasm Style. Increases party's attack by 20% for 3 turns. Increases party's damage against demon, divinity, or undead enemies for 3 turns, and then gains 20 crit stars. The damage against demon or divinity or undead damage is 30% or 50%, which will likely be 50% because she is a free-to-play unit, so you will get the 50%. Uh, and then recovers party's HP, which is 2,000 at charge level 1, and the final charge level it is 4,000. And that is Santa Martha. It's a very simple unit. Um... I just realized, is this... No, okay, no, this is a support. She's a free-to-play support unit for quick, which is pretty nice. And um, in general, she's a nice little support unit to have. Not everyone can have some of the better supports in the game. So it is kind of nice to have one of the... Mm, what's the nice way of putting this? In general, having a support unit is pretty good. And Martha seems pretty like... Her niche is catered toward fighting anything that is demon divinity or undead uh i would also assume if you're fighting something that is a demon divine and undead would you get 150 percent damage increase i think so. no it says or so that makes me feel like it's one of them not 100 percent sure but either way there's plenty of bosses specifically raid bosses that are demon divinity or undead so for a free-to-play unit that and you're and not every again not everyone can have every single support you did in the game like not everyone can have oberon and this is actually pretty nice. Being a quick support is actually pretty sweet because she gets 20 crit stars and you get plenty of <laughs> crit stars in quick. So it kind of meshes with her there. That also kind of mixes with her third skill where she focuses on giving an ally's critical star absorption and then gives more crit stars. And she even charges her own NP gauge on that, which is 30%. And she even charges uh, the others, anyone's NP gauge by 20%. So it's actually possible to charge your own NP gauge by 50% if you wanted, though chances are you will be using it on someone else. So either way, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, there's not a lot of caster quick units out there, if I actually think about it. Especially with, like, quick NPs, now that I think about it. There's not, like, a buttload of them. We did just get one um, pretty recently in Gouda Gouda, but that's about it. As far as Vigo NA goes, I'll say again. So yeah, that's Martha Santa. She's a free-to-play unit. I think she's very nice, very cool, and in theory you can use her for a variety of ways because she's just a very simple support unit. <laughs> and then specifically if you ever fight against Demon, Divine, or Undead, a 50% damage increase is pretty nice on top of 
Also an additional 20% attack up and gaining 20 crit stars. Not bad. You could do worse. Now let's talk about the actual banner units. I will not be going over Emiya and Martha. Emiya has been basically golden boy number one since he released. Uh, not to say he's ever been, I think, the absolute best four star in the game. But he's been basically constantly buffed. I want to say he has like one of the most buffs of anyone. Hawkeye B+. This got like two buffs. <laughs> I didn't think that was, that was super necessary. But you know, he is a golden boy. He is from Fate Stay Night. So he's going to get some form of support. His noble phantasm has been buffed up. He's extremely good. You don't need me to tell you that Emiya is good. So there you go. Martha, on the other hand, if I remember right, she is not that amazing. Yeah, she needs more buffs from what I remember. Yeah, she's a very old unit, so I'm just going to leave it at she needs more buffs <laughs> and say it at that. But she's a four star. She's in every single banner. She's not hard to get, If in theory. You're going to get copies of her. I've been able to almost get her MP5 just by randomly getting her by spooks and banner. Now, in terms of the actual five stars, we have Benny Enma. Benny Enma is a limited servant. She is a saber. She is one quick, two arts, two buster. Her first skill is Eye of the Mind False A. Grants self evasion for one turn and then increase crit damage for three turns. The crit damage increase is 40% and the cooldown is six. The second skill is the Star Basket Big EX. Reduces all enemies at defense for three turns. Reduces their critical attack chance for three turns. Steals their NP for one turn and then recovers their HP by a thousand. That's a demerit. Its defense down is 20% and the crit chance down is 30%. And that's a cooldown of 6. Her third skill is the Star Basket Small EX. Increases party's attack for 3 turns. Increases party's buff removal resistance for a single turn. Charges party's NP gauge and then recovers party's HP by 1000. And then also recovers all enemies HP by 1000. The attack up is 20%, the buff removal resistance is 100%, and the NP increase is 20%. And that is at a cooldown of 6 at level 10. Uh, her passive skills are Magic Resistance A, Independent Action A, Present Concealment A, In Creation B, and Ventrilo <laughs> Ventriloquism EX. That is true. She is, the, I, you know... Yeah, there was an entire story built around that. I forget sometimes. Anti-Assassin Attack Damage Aptitude increases his own attack against assassin enemies. And our Noble Phantasm is the rank A Judgment of the Ten Kings, uh, Wicker Box Fate, or as it's said kind of in Japanese, excuse me for this. Jua Hakenketsu Sarza no Michiyuki. I completely butchered that. Apologies once again. Rank A anti unit noble phantasm. It hits five times, which is important for an arts NP. And uh, she deals damage to a single enemy. Uh, the damage is 900% at level one. And the, uh, if you get her to MP5 somehow, it is uh, 1,500. And her overcharge is an increase against enemies of the chaotic alignment for one turn. And an increase of damage against evil alignment for a single turn. Uh, at charge level 1, that is 40%, 40% for both. And you get 60% and 60% if you get her to overcharge level 5. If you are fighting against a chaotic evil unit, she is basically your girl. <laughs> she will absolutely devastate Lancer Kiyohime if there's ever a challenge quest related to fighting Lancer Kiyohime. Um... It's a very, very specific thing to be anti, but she really completely messes them up. But yeah, that is Benny Enma. I've always really liked Benny Enma. I think she's a pretty solid uh, single target arts unit. I'm not 100% sure if everyone agrees with me on that one. The reason is, is that I think some people don't like the stuff like where she recovers their HP, which is only in the grand scheme of things like 2000s. It's not the biggest deal. Uh, at least to me. She is a single target unit. I think she ends up providing enough. I think she's a pretty fun unit to use as well. It's always been kind of... I've always wanted her on my NA account, but it's another unit that only ever showed up on my JP account, which makes me sad. Uh, but I think she's a very cool unit. And that's basically it. She has, she does a lot. And again, if you're ever fighting, the cool thing about it is that if you like Benny Enma, if you're ever fighting against a chaotic or evil alignment, she is 100% your girl and she will absolutely destroy and devastate them in many multiple ways. I think the one negative that I think most some people have about her is that I don't think she has any like actual like super increase to herself, which I think is fair. A lot of your damage you're hoping to come from 
chaotic and evil alignment. But in terms of arts units, she hits five times. She should be able to pretty easily get back her NP. It shouldn't be that much of an issue. A lot of that is fixed thanks to Castoria, though. And she even has, even if for whatever reason it doesn't happen, she does have like a little like support things mixed into her NP. Like she'll get 20%, but then she'll also buff the party's attack, heal them a little bit, and then buff removal resistance, which is pretty niche of an effect, but occasionally it does pop up and it's nice to have for those moments. Just to confirm that they never take your buffs and stuff. It's funny that I'm like, yeah, giving your opponent a thousand HP doesn't really matter when they have like multiple break bars and their HP can go up to like uh, a million. But yours, a thousand HP is pretty nice. <laughs> it's not bad. Anyway, that's Benny Enma. Next, we have Scotty. And if you are summoning on this banner, it is likely because you are summoning for Scotty. She is a caster. She is two quick, two arts, one buster. Her first skill is the Primeval Rune, increases one ally's quick performance for three turns, and then increases their critical damage against quick cards for three turns. 50% quick, and quick uh, crit damage is 100%, and cooldown is uh, six. Second skill is the Shivering Blizzard B, reduces all enemies' defense for three turns, and then reduces their critical attack chance for three turns. The defense down is 30%, and the crit chance is 30%, and the cooldown is six. Third skill is the All Father's Wisdom B+, charges one ally's NP gauge, and it's 50%. Very simple. Boom. Cooldown 6. Her passive skills are Territory Creation EX, Item Construction A, and the God Assistance A. Third skill is the Anti-Caster Attack Damage Aptitude, increases own attack against caster enemies. And her Noble Phantasm, which is going to get strengthened with this event, is the Rank EX, Gate of Sky, Gate to the Magical Realm, Brimming with Death. Uh, Rank EX, Anti-Army, World Declaration, Noble Phantasm. It is arts, even though she is a quick unit, she is in fact arts. Uh, increases party's attack for 5 turns, increases party's crit damage for 3 attacks 5 turns, grants party evasion for 1 attack 3 turns, grants party instant kill immunity for 1 time 3 turns, the attack up is 30%, the crit damage is 100%, and then the reduces party's, uh, whoa whoa whoa, hold up, go back, at MP level 1. The attack increase is 20% and the crit damage is 50%. And then at MP level 5, the attack up is 30% and the crit damage is 100%. Forgive me. Uh, reduces parties of damage uh, taken for 3 turns. At charge level 1, it's five, minus 500. And then at the final level, it is 1,500. And yeah, the buff here is massive. Because... Um, she previously did not give critical, she did not increase party's attack previously, and the crit damage that she increased was, um, three attacks, five turns. That stays, but the damage increase is actually here. It used to be 30%, and now they've rounded it up to 50%, as you can see right there. And it's 100% at the final level, as opposed to where it was 50% previously. And the rest has remained basically the same. Um, Scotty is really good. She is the quick support. She is all quick has, for the most part, <laughs> in terms of support. There is some support coming in um, Summertime uh, with Summer Scotty, but at that point, I think the main thing that you really use quick is so that you can use Summer Scotty with two Scotties, <laughs> at least I think anyway. Um, currently on NA, and I think maybe it's true in JP right now, of the three specific colors, Arts, Buster, and Quick, who have specific support casters that, or casters, or spe specific support units that buff the um, the class, like the classic 50% up. I think Quick, at least on the NA side, is definitely the weakest of the three. That doesn't mean that you can't win with them, though, because up until, like, um, two years ago, Quick was number one, and up until this year, Buster was not in contention. It just goes to show how crazy of a power up and glow up uh, Arts and Buster got in that short amount of time. Um, that it's left some people feeling like Quick is maybe too weak or something, but you can definitely still easily like farm with Quick. It's not the hardest thing in the world. Actually, that's not true. <laughs> Let me go back on that. The main issues that comes with Quick farming, with Quick farming, at least on the NA side. Again, on the JP side, I. This does not apply because this is on NA. I always have to make that clear just in case someone from JP. I don't know why you're watching this, but thank you very much for watching. Um, but the main idea is is that on the NA side, Quick suffers from the MP gain the most. I feel a lot of units typically don't make the 50% threshold, which for both um, 
The 50% is extremely important because that's where the part where it says charges one allies MP gauge and increase it by 50%. That's where you'll go over the top and you'll actually be able to shoot your MP again. So in theory, if you're only if you're running a team that is specifically double Scotty and only one quick unit, you want to make sure that when your dude does their NP, that they have 50% NP or they have the ability to get there twice. There are concessions in the team building that you can do that will make it so that you always hit the 50%, but that is also unit by unit and you have to really think that stuff through. And that's something that Arts and Buster don't really suffer through as much as Quick. I feel like Quick requires a lot more thinking and planning out on how to do specific things. That's not true for all their units, but it's wide enough between all their units that it is something to think about. Like, obviously, if you have Dantes and he's NP2, you don't have to worry about this. Dantes will make it there and not a problem. Do you have Voyager? He'll make it there. Not an issue for him. Do you have Assassin Kama? Not going to be an issue for her at all. But then there's other units like uh, Summer, Assassin, Ushi Wakamaru, she does have those issues. Specifically, even with her having an MP gauge, her um, MP gain is just too low and she's not able to make the 50% unless it's under very specific circumstances. And this is coming from someone who has her on MP3. I have tried my hardest <laughs> to make my girl work on NA and there's so much B team building concessions that it makes it very hard. So that's where also, like, that's where it comes in where it's stuff like, well, now you have to kind of use Kaleidoscope or you have to use Arush on the front. And that's all stuff that you have to think about and kind of make concessions in the team building when you're making a unit. That doesn't make her bad. That just means you have to think more. <laughs> so she's an extremely good unit. It's still fantastic. I still do quick farming here and there, depending on what... Uh, sometimes it's because I'm feeling nostalgic and I want to use my, um, my Summer Goth. Uh, Dantes to his fullest extent especially after he got his buff and and honestly it's perfectly fine it's perfectly usable it's just something that you have to build for if you're someone who absolutely loves quick this is a no-brainer get this is 100% get even if you don't like quick I would still say she was 100% a good unit and worth having um, now obviously with some of the banners coming up like the New Year's banner Korean Sky is coming in a month which is the Buster. If you're someone with a big Buster team, if it's between Scotty and Koyanskaya, um, specifically the Buster version, the Light, Koyanskaya of Light, I believe, uh, I would prioritize Koyanskaya of Light. That's just kind of how I feel about it, because she is, I think, technically a better unit, and you'll find more good Buster stuff. But at the same time, if you have a enough quick units to or you're someone who's built for quick or you love enough quick units and scotty's kind of like a no-brainer kind of girl to get and the other half if you have oberon a lot of these issues kind of go away as well <laughs> because oberon is another support unit that you can use to buff up the units and i think that actually fixes a lot of quick units um and you can use it in a cheaty way like obviously in infogo is a game that you can if you can figure out a way to make a team it's possible you just need to figure out the team and make it work uh whether or not you want to put in that work is up to you <laughs> I think Scotty's worth the uh, worth the effort and is a good unit. That is all to say. It's funny because I feel, I feel like I'm being like overly negative for a unit that I consider like a top 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 tier unit, but I have to kind of just make some of the stuff known. The only reason I even feel this way is because I I grind a whole bunch with quick units, and I was definitely someone who I remember on the JP side. I was like, I can't wait for quick to get their new servant that's going to change everything, and they didn't get that. They got a unit that is still pretty good but they didn't get what I wanted which is the second coming of Koyanskaya and Castoria but for quick or Scotty when she originally released um but that's just not what they got they got Summer Scotty which is another unit that I also really want and is coming this year <laughs> but anyway that's a problem for future Wokey to deal with but anyway yeah that's Scotty fun fact about Scotty Scotty is also one of the units that um contributed to making one of my biggest videos on the channel so I have a big love and respect for Scotty because she is one of the units I remember most. I think she also, there was a video with my brother. Uh, if you ever see the summon video for me and my brother with Scotty, uh, there will not be a summon video for Scotty um, because that video exists and there's no video that we could ever do <laughs> that would be as good as that one that we did. And I don't really want an MP2. But funny enough, if you can with this buff, MP2 Scotty is. I've actually over the years made fun of MP2 like MP2 Scotty for a lot of years. I've made fun of her NP because I thought it wasn't good until I was proven wrong uh, this year, and I've admitted that I was wrong all those years. But there was no reason for me to ever say like, "Hey, getting her at MP2 doesn't mean anything." Getting her to MP2 is actually kind of sick because you get 75% crit damage. 
which is kind of insane. And if you somewhere get into MP5, that's 100% crit damage. It's only for three attacks, but I think most things will be dead <laughs> in that span of time. So anyway, I think she's a cool unit. Uh, definitely worth having. Good luck to you if you end up going for her. And that's the end of the video, everyone. This video ended up being insanely long. Uh, if you made it here to the end, thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate it a whole bunch. I am still working on a bunch of other videos. Um, things are crazy busy at work, which is interfering with some of the stuff. I wasn't expecting it because things were so light, but uh, I'm working on it. And those videos will hopefully be out soon. Uh, we'll have a video out doing for Lotto Grind, specifically for sure. I will have that no problem. I also still need to catch up with Lost Belt 6. Uh, that was pretty crazy. I also played a lot of the Like a Dragon Guy Dead, and I beat all that, so maybe that also helped a little bit, you know? <laughs> I like, you know, I've been doing stuff. By the way, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I appreciate it a whole bunch. If you want to show any support, you can always leave a like. You can always subscribe. It does help out the channel a whole bunch. But I think that's enough for this video, because I have other stuff to do. I have to eat. I have to go probably make my salad and eat. But that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Best of luck to you guys if you're summoning. Get ready for Lotto Grinding, and if you're not ready for Lotto, for Lotto Grinding, get ready to finish Lost Belt 6. And if you're not, if you're already finished with Lost Belt 6, I guess at this point, I guess what's between you? Are you ready for the Lotto Grind, or are you going to go in for um, the raid? Because in theory, I have enough to do both. I just need to actually catch up to Lost Belt 6. Actually, every single time I take spending on this video is another minute I could have been using to read the story of Lost Belt 6. Huh. Anyway, that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much. Until next time, goodbye. Peace.